Like pretty much everyone, I love watching movies. But since the end of last year, this has accelerated for some reason. It's hard to know exactly why. Maybe it's the movie spreadsheet I created. Maybe it's my signing up to the Netherlands's Cineville screen. Or maybe it's because of my 4K UHD Blu-ray player. Yes, you heard that right. I prefer to watch movies at home with a disc. So in this video, we're gonna look at why this is, my Blu-ray player of choice, specifically this one, and why this decision is both smart and stupid. But first off, let's get into some of the technical details of this choice and start with quality. Here we go. Now, it's important to note I'm an enthusiast, not an expert, so this would be a broad overview. And to get into it, to put it simply, 4K is a display resolution. Now, resolution itself is simply the amount of pixels a screen can show, something that translates directly into how much detail a picture has. Normally, this is described as the number of pixels across the width and height of a screen, respectively. For example, the 1080p resolution, which we normally refer to as HD, has 1920 pixels wide and 1080 pixels of height. Without getting mixed up with cinema formats, 4K for the home user means a picture that is 3840 pixels wide and 2160 pixels tall. Effectively, what this means is there's four times as much detail or pixels in a 4K screen as there is in a 1080p, as we said, which was the old HD standard. This is another important element in the discussion about quality, but one we don't really need to dwell on too much. All you need to know is HDR stands for High Dynamic Range, and TV and content that support it have brighter images and a wider range of colours. Effectively, what this means is the pictures that you see are more realistic and natural looking. Now, there are three main HDR formats. HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision. And these are all things that your hardware, specifically your TV, needs to support to work. Basically, there's a huge battle going on in this realm right now, similar to the VHS and Betamax, for which one of these standards is going to dominate the industry for the years to come. Basically, all you need to know is what HDR is and that different formats exist. Oh, and it makes the picture look great. Arguably, a far bigger improvement than the leap from 1080p to 4K. Wow, that felt like a lot. When did watching movies and TV get so goddamn complicated? But we're not quite done yet. We need to talk about streaming a bit now. Now these features, 4K and HDR, are available on both streaming networks and 4K UHD Blu-ray discs, but there is a difference. Now, this isn't to say streaming quality is bad, far from it. You can get some amazing pictures on those services. It's just that 4K UHD Blu-rays are better, and that is all because of compression. Sorry to continue this technical workshop I'm not qualified for, but we can still get through the basics. Now, there's some amazing videos out there by some phenomenal people breaking all this down, but we can summarize it for you. Effectively, everything is compressed because it needs to be. An uncompressed 4K video would use in the region of 5 terabytes an hour, an amount of data that's far too big for any in-use formats today. Now, a 4K UHD Blu-ray disc generally has 66 or 100 gigabytes of information on there, but you still get a fantastic picture due to intelligent compression. What this works out to, post-2018 at least, are videos that play anywhere between 72 and 144 megabits per second. Now, it's hard to get an exact number from Netflix, but all the research and data points to a 4K video streaming on that network from anywhere between 15.6 to 25 megabits per second, something it uses mainly to cut down on bandwidth rates. Arguably, what you're getting with a 4K Blu-ray is something that is technically six times the quality of a streaming network. Not really. There is no way on earth you would look at a 4K Netflix stream and a 4K Blu-ray and say the latter is six times as good as the former when it comes to quality. But despite saying that, there is a difference. 
Of course, if you're watching a slow black and white drama or an old sitcom, you probably won't see too much of a difference between a stream and a Blu-ray. But if you're checking out a genuine cinematic spectacle with lots of detail and movement and deep colours and blacks, then it is clearly noticeable on a half-decent TV. And one element where streaming services cannot compete with 4K Blu-rays is sound. The discs themselves have lossless audio, and if you have a decent sound system or speaker set up, you can genuinely hear the difference between the two formats. The sound is richer, deeper, more specific. It really is a whole world apart. All this sounds fantastic, right? But it is a luxury. Yes, Blu-rays might be better now than streaming services, but in the next years, we're gonna see internet speeds increase, bandwidth limits raise, and we're gonna get an experience that is closer and closer to physical discs. Well, this is where you bump in to the biggest issue, money. I'll use my Blu-ray player as an example, the Sony UBP-X800M2. Catchy name, I know. Honestly, I love it. It's not the prettiest thing out there, but I still like its utilitarian vibes. Effectively, it has everything you could want from a 4K Blu-ray player. It has Dolby Vision and high-res audio support, 4K upscaling. It can even play files and videos of pretty much any format. Hell, you can even stream Netflix on the damn thing. It's not perfect. For example, there's no HDR 10 Plus support on there, which would be nice. But generally, it gives me everything I could want from a piece of hardware like this. But and this is the biggest issue, it's not cheap, it's expensive, it costs about $300. Now, there are some other options, you can get some cheaper models or use something like the Xbox One, but that kind of loses part of the magic for me, part of the joy and the overall experience of having such a quality bit of kit. Then you have the movies. A 4K Netflix subscription costs about $16 and that comes with a whole 4K library, while a single Blu-ray disc costs you at least $20. Now, you could argue that you buy a movie on Amazon for about $10, but that is still half the price as generally the cheapest new Blu-ray. Simply, to sum it up, a 4K Blu-ray player just isn't economical. Well, we've already covered the quality increase, which I'm a big fan of, but it's something far more than that. At heart, I'm a hoarder. I love collecting things. The idea of building up a physical library is something that just really appeals to me on a deep fundamental level. Having physical Blu-rays makes choosing a film to watch more akin to going to the cinema, of having an actual experience of engaging with a piece of art rather than using a streaming service, which just feels like another internet web app in its own way. But really, a 4K Blu-ray player is a companion to stream not something I would give up my Netflix account for. Effectively, it's a luxury, it's an indulgence, it's something I love, but it is slightly nonsensical. But what I'm really saying is a 4K Blu-ray player is both smart and stupid. What should we take away from this then? Basically, streaming quality is not as good as 4K Blu-rays, but in five to 10 years, internet connections might get good enough that you don't really see the difference anymore. But right now, there is definitely a difference. The question is, is whether that's good enough for most people to fork out $300 on a Blu-ray player and at least $20 a pop on movies. And for me, it is, but for you, it might not be. But let's focus on me for a bit, because it is all about me, of course. Thing is, I love it. Everything about it, not just the quality, it's the whole experience of watching movies with a 4K Blu-ray player. It's building up a collection. It's being able to go to a physical space and select the movie you want to watch. It's just how differently I view films and movies these days. There's something about having a disc in your hand that makes you look at a movie as a piece of individual art, as opposed to just another service you select on the internet. But we circle back round to that eternal question. Should you, the viewer, buy a 4K Blu-ray player? And 
I just can't answer that for you. It's too personal. You might think it's a stupid waste of money or you might think it's an investment in your enjoyment of an art form. And for once, we can all be right. It's okay. We can both be smart and stupid and that is cool.